All right, so um, so the first one we're going to go over is Chad Beebe, uh, the wide receiver. So this is his career. This is not just 2019. This is his career numbers. So he's played in six games. He hasn't started a single one of them. He has caught all six of his targets for 109 yards, 18.2 yards per reception, and has not scored a touchdown. Um... Five of his six career catches have gone for first down, so that's helpful. And his yards per game is 18.2 yards. Now, the reason why I think he is potentially, you know, on the chopping block here, it sort of added to their receivers quite heavily this offseason. When you look at things, um, they added uh, Tajay Sharp, obviously drafted Justin Jefferson, K.J. Osborne later, and then they also added undrafted free agent Courtney Davis, who also looks like another player that could potentially make the roster. And BB has been hurt a lot, and you could actually make the case that Ola B.C. Johnson, him, like, you know, him, seventh round pick from last year's draft, is a better player. So I think Chad Beebe's likely off the roster here just because he was never anything special in the first place and now he keeps getting hurt. He can't stay on the field. And for some of these lower roster guys, that availability is oftentimes the best ability, as you'll hear people say, and I think that is more than true here. Uh, he just isn't available enough. Even if he is good or decent when he's on the field, you can't, it's hard to justify it. And I know some people even think Tajay Sharp may not make the team. I don't think I necessarily fully agree with that, but that might be a different video entirely. Um, the second one here is less of, you know, a player and more of a position group because I think you can make any one of these conversation, you know, a thing here, which is almost just the interior defensive line. The main three being uh, Shamar Stefan, Jalen Holmes, and Jaleel Johnson. So none of these players really have made that much of a difference. And honestly, it's really just time to thin this thing out. Um, right now they have Michael Pierce, Shamar Stephan, Julio Johnson, Jalen Holmes, Armin Watts. Uh, they've liked Hercules Mata'afa. And then they draft James Lynch in the fourth round. And then you also add David Moa as an undrafted free agent. Uh, Jaleel and Jalen Johnson. Well, yeah, Jaleel and Jalen have both flashed in the preseason, but it hasn't really amounted to anything. Partially because of that love affair they seem to have with Shamar Stefan, which I really don't quite understand. Um, like it, to me, he doesn't do much there, and I think they could get better in both either. If they want to get another pure run stuffer, that's fine, but I feel like Shamar Stefan falls somewhere in the middle where he isn't a pure like, run you know, a gap filler, right? But he also isn't much of a pass rusher, so that you end up with a player that's like kind of this weird low mix of both that ends up doing kind of neither, and it's like both at a very mediocre level. So I don't really get the point of Shamar Stefan being in the starting lineup, and I think Jaleel Johnson could probably be the most likely one to stay. Uh, Jalen Holmes looks like that's a failed experiment, shifting him over from a defensive end in college over into that three-tech spot. We just haven't seen much of that either. And a lot of this could be just they have not played them. Shamar Stefan ends up playing a majority of the time. And the one thing that's really telling to me is towards, you know, the middle of the season, we started seeing more Armin Watts. And that tells me they like him better than both Johnson and Holmes. So I think it's not really a... I don't think it would be too ridiculous to think two of any two of these three players could be gone. And I think it really is time just to, you know, thin this thing out. It is very crowded, so fix it. Because there's like nine players, right? So that's a lot for a 43 team here. Um, and obviously we have the backup quarterbacks. Um, I'm also listing both here in both Sean Mannion and Jake Browning, even though this is more Sean Mannion than Jake Browning. Um, because with Stanley, you could have someone kind of on the way out the door. And I think, like I said, Mannion is probably a more likely candidate to leave just because he, like, yes, he is a veteran, but 
do you need a veteran when you have a veteran starter and in Kirk Cousins to teach the two younger guys or not even necessarily teach, but just watch how he goes about his day even? Probably not. And Stanley's on a cheap four-year deal, so that's kind of nice. And Browning still has that practice squad eligibility, so that's even better because now you can keep all three with only having two practice uh, uh, two roster spots taken up because that's where Jake Browning resided last year was uh, right on the practice squad. So I think we could look at uh, Sean Mannion kind of leaving. Um, I would be a little surprised if they cut Jake Browning and kept Sean Mannion because I, I would also assume, I, I just wouldn't think they would give up on him that early because even though we saw them give up on Kyle Sloter, we didn't see them give up after one season necessarily. And, uh, yeah. So, I think Rashad Hill is also kind of on the on the board here because Brandle here is a potential swing tackle they took really late in the draft. But they also have Udo if they say Reef is a left tackle, right? Udo is... You know, a right tackle by trade. If Reef, they're saying, is a left tackle and you want to rest Ezra Cleveland a year, do you really need a third guy here? Because you could say you could even cut both Brandel and Rashad Hill at that point. Because once again, Brandel has that practice squad eligibility thing here where Rashad Hill kind of doesn't. And. You could be just kind of going young and cheap there with Cleveland, Udo, and then put Brandel on the practice squad and get rid of Rashad Hill as well, and then you save some money that way. And just in general, I think Rashad Hill is kind of potentially, unless he kind of improves, because to me, I, I don't know, Rashad Hill is kind of a weird player because like I kind of understand where the swing tackle things are. They usually aren't that great, and Rashad Hill is probably one of the better ones, but at the same time, if you're saying Riley Reef is a left tackle, I it's hard to see them not do that. Um, and then my little bonus one here is Ben Gideon. I know a lot of people have probably said this one because uh, well, one he lost his job to Eric Wilson last year, so that's a that's a big tell. And then they took Troy Die, who is a good coverage linebacker who also has really good length and athleticism. So, what does Gideon offer you? Doesn't offer much coverage, which both Eric Wilson and Die do. He doesn't have much athleticism, which once again both Die and Wilson have. And he isn't much in coverage. He isn't a pass rusher, and he really is really limited in just being in the base defense, which really hurts him. So him being on the chopping block as well wouldn't surprise me. Um, I almost expected at this point he might even be a trade candidate if there's some kind of minor trade they want to look at. Um, but he, he might even go into that. And I'd like to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Did I forget someone? Did you think this is like, well, that's wrong. You're an idiot. And then tell me. Um, that's what that's there for. And uh, like and subscribing, super helpful. And until next time, I bid y'all adieu.